this first happy opening day? I mean, how excited are you just to start the season? Um, it's exciting. Um, you know, this is the first chance we get to uh, have an opening day, so to kind of take that in and enjoy it. Uh, there's a lot of first for some of our guys. Um, and then, you know, tomorrow we'll get to the next day and start grinding, but I think uh, we're excited. Um, good to see Julio make his uh, first opening day start. Guys are excited to get going. But those guys who are on their first opening day roster, one of them being James Outland, starting no, I, I think with certain players, um, less is more. And uh, with James, I just feel that you know, just to kind of go out there, write his name in the lineup, and let him uh, go out there and play baseball is probably the best. Um, obviously, with uh, Vargas, I, I think that you know he's in a good spot. Excited about it today. There should be some nerves, which is to be expected. Um, you know, and obviously what we're going to get to is, uh, you know, Michael Grove, who now is on our roster um, because of, uh, you know, that little sort of side oblique uh, discomfort that uh, Ryan had in his last start. And so I don't know what that means uh, as far as the longer term. But right now we shut down for a few days and we'll kind of pick back up from there. Uh, but for Michael, it's, uh, it's a great opportunity. I'm excited for him. When you hear the word kind of oblique, that, that's a pretty delicate thing for a pitcher. Like, how concerned are you that it's going to be a long term thing? I, I think when, when you hear oblique, it, it's more of what that says to us is to be extra careful uh, so it doesn't linger. Um, so I think that's kind of where we're at with that. Did you guys know he was kind of dealing with that for a couple starts? Uh, it, was, it started out in Chicago, and, and so at that point in time, we were in Mesa. and. Um, so at that point in time, we took him out of the game um, and then uh, went through his regular progressions. I uh, had no discomfort or, or sensation, um, even warming up, and he felt it um, in that last inning. And so, you know, you know all we can sort of go on is, is uh, symptoms and how the player's feeling. And so uh, we didn't know, because if we had known going into that start, he would have made the start. But, from all things that we gathered, he was ready to go. Doc, there's been a lot of talk about this team being a little unstable going into the season as opposed to past seasons because of the turnover of personnel, you know, how, many, how much money you shed. How do you feel about it? What's your reaction to people saying that? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think that uh, there's certainly a lot of, um, I guess, expectations for other teams. Um, I, I don't think it changes our internal focus and goal to be as good as we can uh, to win a lot of baseball games. I do think that some of the turnover that we've had, I think it's a, it's a good thing in the sense of giving other guys opportunities. Um, I still like the dynamic of our ball club uh, with the veterans and the, the younger ball players. Um, you know, we still got to kind of come together as a team, which I think all teams uh, have that uh, challenge, I think is a good word, with given the WBC, we haven't played together a whole lot. Um, but as far as the talent, I, I, I still like this club. Dick, because of the WBC and because so many new faces in spring, did you accomplish what you wanted in spring and as we start a new season? Uh, I, I think given the circumstances, we did. Um, obviously, you know, the first uh, part of spring training was losing Gavin, and that's something that still uh, is very uh, upsetting uh, to a lot of us. Um, but outside of that, uh, given the circumstance, I think we did a, a fine job in getting guys prepared, um, getting them ramped up offensively, pitching wise, and then also keeping them healthy. So I think those are kind of the box that every team wants to check. Is there a vibe around you guys right now that it feels like you have something to prove or just kind of being in a whole different spot than you guys have been in the last few years coming into a season? Um, I, I think that, I don't think that the vibe um, is different inside of our clubhouse. I, I think it's a very, I think the time that I've been here, it, it's a very uh, professional and, and I say it, it's a very kind of uh, even keeled group. Um, understanding, you know, the responsibility of, of being a major league player. 
Um, that hasn't changed. I think there's excitement with opening day, which is good. But um, kind of the prognosticators outside of that, all that stuff, I don't think that's kind of affecting kind of the, the, the vibe in the clubhouse. Dave, were you as curious as everyone else exactly what you have here? And, and does that add some intrigue maybe you haven't had in the last four or five years? It does. It does. I, I think that the thing is, I think, I think volatility is probably too strong of a word, um, but when you have uh, more veteran ball players or proven players, I think that you can sort of bet on the baseball card um, when there's more unknowns as far as service time. I think it, it adds to that sort of volatility, but with that comes a lot of excitement. And I think that for all of us, um, we're going to embrace that. Um, it, it's not going to be linear. There's going to be some growing pains with some guys. Um, but I think that this is a good runway for, you know, close to a handful of uh, young ball players for us. Dave, when you, when you have, you talk about this a lot, the clubhouse rather, and you have a better presence like Jason Hayward, what, some of, what are some of the intangibles that you feel like you can bring inside that clubhouse on and off the field? Well, uh, the, uh, on the field, um, I, I, I think that he's gotten a lot better uh, with his mechanics and he's got a great rapport with the hitting guys, uh, which is fantastic. There's a trust there. Um, I trust him anywhere in the, uh, in the outfield. I trust that he'll be ready when called upon, um, understanding his role in the ball club, which is very valuable. Um, off the field in the clubhouse, uh, he uh, ended up buying coaches, all the coaches and players, uh, a bottle of wine each. There was a, a bottle of wine in everyone's locker to start the season. Um, that's just kind of a, a microcosm of what Jason does. Um, he's a team first guy. And uh, those things of kind of how to carry yourself uh, as a veteran, as a teammate, are going to go a long way. And so we've been fortunate in my tenure to have a lot of great veteran ball players, and Jason uh, is right up there at the top. So uh, I'm going to be counting on him a lot. I am. How do you do with this line selection? Um, it was good. It was good. Uh, suffice to say that uh, I got a different bottle than the other group, which uh, I can appreciate his feel for my uh, my palate, which is good. But uh, for, for that in bulk, very good choice. Dave, you've seen in your time guys like Tony in San Diego or Barry Bonds up in San Francisco, or the city sort of has a tie to those guys. Do you see something like that developing with Julio here, or is that something you got to play out for the rest of your career? Um, there is, there is. Uh, if you look at this fan base, um, gosh, you look at uh, you look at this fan base, um, and you look at how uh, they support Julio, uh, regardless of race. Um, I, I certainly believe that uh, with what Fernando did for baseball and the Dodgers, and how Julio has embraced his uh, Mexican background, um, you know, it's always fun to root for people who look like you. And um, being in Los Angeles, it's fantastic. There's a lot of people that look a lot different than everyone, which is great about our city. Um, but yeah, you mentioned Tony, who I had a chance to see Tony win in San Diego. Um, you talked about Perry Barnes. And, and Julio, granted, he's a pitcher who plays once every five days. Uh, but if it wasn't for Julio, we would be having mariachi uh, on Taco Tuesday nights at Dodger Stadium. So. Um, there's kind of a cult following with Julio, and uh, yeah, I'm just lucky he's a Dodger. And he's the free agent at the end of this year, right? I've heard. Yeah, so I mean, <laughs> basically the pattern has been recently, you guys are not keeping your free agent. Thanks for that, Bill. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you know what? Right I'm not going to go there. That's a long ways away from that. So. Um, but in the past, that, that in the recent past, it's, it's what's happened. You've gone from you know, Seager to Trey Turner to the shortstop situation you're in today because you didn't retain your player. Uh, well, I, I think that Trey's in a different category than Julio, um, but Seager's fair. But uh, this is, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, I'm sure we'll have plenty of time to discuss that going forward. <laughs> is there a different buzz here on the 19th pitching from the crowd during the game? Yeah, there is. There is. I, I think that each one of our starters um, has a different vibe, which is great. Um, you know, when Clayton pitches, there's uh, 
there's a there's an anticipation there's a little bit of uh, on eggshells um, there's an intensity um, when Julio's pitching there's kind of that extra ramp up of, uh, of excitement joy um, fire um, you know when Dustin pitches it's different and then when Tony pitches it's different and so uh, it's actually good to kind of feel the, the from inside the clubhouse to when the pitcher takes the mound, kind of that that vibe. Was he out there any particular restrictions in the two starts he made in the WBC? Yeah, yeah, he was, he was. Um, I don't recall exactly what those two starts were. Um, I think it was like. I don't think he did the 65 the first time. I no, no, he was like three and 45 the first time, but I think right. out there the second the time. He certainly, certainly didn't do the eight either. Yeah, yeah. So I think that it, it's going to be a little bit. Um, you know, we're going to manage it tonight. Um, so this is one of you know many starts. So we're going to we're going to be sort of mindful. Dave, is it kind of a bummer that it's opening night instead of opening day at Dodger Stadium? You know, I, I don't know. Um, I, I think that uh, you know, given we just came from spring training, so I, I would argue that our players like to sleep in and get ready on some schedule. But yeah. I think the tradition of opening day and starting up and there's a baseball game at one o'clock, um, I think that's always nice. Um, so I still think our guys are going to do a great job with it. It's still going to be fun. Dave, I know you're not going in with a designated closer, but will you sort of know before each game based on your lineup, your opponent's lineup groupings, left, right, who's going to kind of pitch the seventh, eighth, ninth? Um, yes, yeah. I think that um, you know this in the beginning part of, of the season is going to be a little bit more tricky to manage because uh, I'm going to be more mindful of the up downs um, for for a reliever, the, uh, the firemen uh, in that kind of big spot. Um, but it's going to be how it falls out. But yeah, there's going to be a, a few guys each night that I feel, given their their usage, uh, that'll finish the game. Yeah. Since today. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's sort of fair, but you know, the game could be in the balance in the sixth or seventh inning. So I, I just don't know how this game's going to play out. Just a double check. Grove's going to start Monday. Grove will start in uh, Ryan's place. Yeah. Eventually, the outset by just losing Gavin so early in the game. How important is it for you guys to have him just around everyone, even though he's probably not playing this year? It's a, it's important. Um, certainly, um, you know Daniel Hudson is different than Gavin Lux. Is different from Walker Buehler. Um, so for Gavin in particular, um, to be around the guys, to feel like he's a part of things, I think is important. I've reached out to him numerous times, and I'm sure his teammates have too. So uh, I think that of all the guys, he'll probably be around the most as far as guys that are um, not available to play. How do you size up the division? What do you think of the rest of the team? Uh, I think I think they're they're really good. I mean, this this team right here is uh, is young um, on the position player side, but very dynamic, very athletic. Um, I think Zach Gallon is one of the better pitchers in baseball. Um, you know, Bum is always going to be Bum, and Merrill Kelly pitched for Team USA. So um, we don't know a lot of their guys in the pen. Um, they're kind of in the same situation there without a club. I would say they're in the same situation we're in, but uh, yeah. um, I think San Diego's had a very good ball club. Um, I think the Giants are going to be better than they were last year. And the Rockies, you know, Buddy is uh, my mentor and he's going to have those guys playing the best they could possibly play. So it's going to be fun. That's why you play. Dave, what was the reaction when you um, told Alvin that he's going to be starting? I think he sort of uh, straight faced me on that one. Um, I was in Anaheim and told him he's going to be starting uh, opening day, and he kind of just gave me a nod while chewing his bubble gum, and that was it. So it was good. I liked that. I didn't. I didn't surprise him or buckle him, or there was no extra uh, angst. So that was good. Is he usually kind of that way? He is. He is. He's just very. Uh, yeah. He, he's very. Does a good job of kind of. I guess getting the emotions through that gum that he's always chewing. That, that he's always <laughs> Have you 
do you feel like the Padres turned the table a little bit on you guys because of the playoffs? Because you dominated them for really years up until the playoffs. Um, I wouldn't say that. Um, they beat us in a series, in a playoff series. Um, so, uh, like I said, I like our ball club. Those guys can play very talented. Um, for 2023, I don't expect to play as well as uh, we did against them in the regular season. And uh, you know, we'll see what happens in the postseason. Thanks, Thank you guys.